My dudes, as you know, I have been a diehard Photoshop user for about 20 years now. I did, for a period of time, I was sponsored by Sketchbook Pro, and I've done a ton of tutorials about Sketchbook Pro. For a period of time in the early 2000s, I was into Corel Painter. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> recently, I picked up a copy of Clip Studio Paint. Uh, there's always a lot of programs to try out for an artist. So I wanted to give Clip Studio Paint a try, and I wanted to give you my first impressions. This video is sponsored by me, <laughs> okay? So I do art tutorials for concept art for video games, and I have hidden codes for 50% off hidden throughout this video. There's only a limited number of them, so pay close attention. If you get those codes, you get a nice discount on some of them tutorials. All right, let's dig into it. These are my Clip Studio Paint first impressions. So I've been using Photoshop for like 20 years because that is an industry standard. That's what most pros at video game studios use, and that's, that's what I've been doing for 20 years. So, but it's expensive. It's like uh, $40 a month in some cases uh, for the whole Adobe package. So it's nice to have something, you know, other options. And I know there's also Krita and there's there's many others, but uh, Clip Studio Paint is the one that most people in the comments are always like, hey, Trent, you should check this out. So I'm obviously starting from a, a concept, a really rough concept thumbnail, but I actually think that that's probably a good idea to start with something that you already have like the, like I don't want to be inundated with composition and, color choices and things like that while I'm exploring this new tool, you know? Uh, so I actually think if you're gonna try a new tool, try to make it as familiar as something that you're already like used to working with. So just as an example, if you're used to drawing with pencil and paper, find a pencil tool within the new digital program that you're trying to learn how to use. So you kind of anticipate how it'll react. And that's something I was really happy about with uh, Clip Studio Paint is that I could import all of my own custom brushes that I made in Photoshop into Clip Studio Paint and they react pretty much exactly the same. There were some differences. I mean, obviously, you know, like for instance, I have my chisel brush, which I sort of, in Photoshop, I manually rotate the angle. But with this, it doesn't give you a visual representation of the angle of the actual brush shape. So like that's gonna take some getting used to because you have to just use either a zero degrees angle or 90 degrees angle. You can't just rotate the graphic of the brush shape. In fact, by default, your brush shape is not represented in the cursor at all, uh, whatever it is. You see how it's just like a big round shape? You have to go up here to uh, preferences and then go into cursor and then switch this down to brush shape in order to see like what is the shape of the brush that you have selected. You see how it actually changes the, the cursor to represent the shape of the actual custom brush that you're using. So that's something you have to kind of like set up. And there is a lot of customizability in it, and I have been enjoying that aspect of it. I also noticed that there's some familiar things like, for instance, if you hit the R key on your keyboard, you can rotate the canvas, which is super useful. And that's something that I do a lot in Photoshop. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do that a lot of the times. And there's a, a large percentage of the quick keys that I use, such as like Command T to transform shapes and objects. There's a lot of customizability. So like, uh, this is this was pretty neat to discover in Clip Studio Paint where you can go in and say, well, if you want to change the quick keys for zooming or the quick keys to go to the brush pen or the quick keys to go to any of the other tools, you can change the quick key button and map it however you want. So you can really customize this a lot, but there's a trade-off to that because then if you're ever working on an unfamiliar machine, you have to do all this setup again and it's unfamiliar to you. That's why I don't like to use a lot of peripherals. I like to just really memorize a system that already kind of works. But if Clip Studio Paint is your first painting program, like, you're fine. Uh, you can customize that however you want, but you can just leave it the default and there's pretty intuitive stuff going on. It does feel probably a bit overwhelming, you know? Uh, it keeps the brush panel up and the br there's like brush, uh, brush panel and then there's an ink panel and then there's like a pencil panel and, and that's just confusing and so I ended up Later in the video, you'll see where I just deleted the tools so that I just have one panel full of brushes. Those are just the brushes that I use and that just seems to be the easier way for me to do it. 
I think it's also very unnecessary to have all of your brushes up all the time. Like I, I tend to, in Photoshop, I have this attached to the button on the Wacom pen so that I can just pop up my brushes when I need them. I don't need them up all the time. It's actually more effective to have more of the image displayed. And, and it's taking up all this real estate on your screen. And I'm working on a MacBook Pro, so it's really like squeezing my actual drawing real estate, the area that I get to work on, you know? So I probably, if I'm gonna use more Clip Studio Paint, I'm gonna end up consolidating and moving these things around so that they're just not taking up so much of the space. All of your tools could be just consolidated into a much more effective layout. One of the things that kept throwing me off is that I'm used to the zooming in Photoshop where you just hold down the Z key and you drag left or right on the canvas. And that does, does not work here. That is not to zoom <laughs> in, in Clip Studio. So the default zooming quick keys are command and the plus and negative keys. And those will zoom in or zoom out. And uh, that took a little bit of getting used to like the old days. <laughs> like, Perhaps it's just, it's a habit kind of a thing. It's like the first time driving a new car and it's like, well, the clutch is a little tight on this one. You know what I mean? Or uh, it's a little little sharp on the gas. So you just barely touch it and it zooms, you know what I mean? So uh, there's a little bit of that adjustment period that I'm going through and that's, that's kind of what I, I, I don't know how much that's, a, you know, representative of the overall software or its efficiency. I didn't notice any like particular slowdown or anything like that. I mean, increasing and decreasing the, the brush sizes, not a problem. The file size got to be fairly large. I was mostly painting with my chisel brush, which is just my familiar from Photoshop, you know, uh, chisel brush. I did begin to delve a little bit into some of the built-in brushes from Clip Studio Paint. And there are some really neat ones actually, by the way. One of the coolest features of Clip Studio Paint is that it has all these like templates and swatches and custom brushes and just a lot of add-ons and swatches and things that you can download directly into Clip Studio Paint. And this is built in, like this is a brush set right here and it looks kind of like an oily brush set. Like there's so much to just delve into and explore every day if you're just looking to kind of change up your your painting process or if you're like, well, how do I get that one look that I see in this other artist's image? And a lot of those custom brushes are totally free, you know, just add-ons, you know, for Clip Studio Paint. After about an hour of painting and, and finding some brushes that felt really comfortable and familiar to me, it started to just feel a little bit more natural, but it was just more about the painting and I started to forget that I was using a new tool altogether. I think that that's sort of natural, it's normal. It's just like when you get a new car, it feels weird and awkward, but then after, you know, a, a few hours straight driving, it just starts to feel normal. You get used to that, you know, tighter clutch or the, uh, you get used to the, the steering radius and things like that. Like just things start to feel a little bit more normal and natural and even rotating my, my brushes started to feel just a little bit more like, yeah, okay, I'm all right with this. It's not as annoying as it was initially. Probably the biggest slowdown that I experience when I'm trying a new software of any kind is just the familiarity of how to do the things that I normally do. Some things are the same, like hitting Command-T when rescaling something on a layer. Like, that's really nice. Uh, that's the same as Photoshop, so that doesn't slow me down. But like, when I wanna go back to hitting, like to my regular brush, in Photoshop I just hit the B button and it goes back to my paintbrush. But that's not true necessarily with Clip Studio Paint. So I have to maybe make some custom modifications to make it more streamlined so that my quick key system is the same as what I experience in Photoshop. Um, and that might be a solution, but I found that it happened on more than one occasion. Like I was trying to find uh, for the moon that I'm putting in here now, like I was trying to find a, a, a layer effect to do a glow around the outside of that. And this isn't like bagging on Clip Studio, this is just, like finding the features and the functions. It's like a whole new world. And I don't even know necessarily if, you know, Clip Studio Paint has a glow effect that you can just put uh, like on a layer, like a blending mode. Um, because it certainly, it has like all the lighten layers, darken layers, multiply, all that stuff. Like the blending modes are the same, but the effects that you can put on a layer, I'm not sure if that's even possible to, to find or to do. And of course, if you know, please drop in the comments, let me know, I'd, I'd love to find out. As I said, this is a first impressions video. And yeah, I, I did a bunch of research. I was like hunting through, looking for ways to do that. And I didn't find any efficient 
built-in system for those kind of effects. I did, however, run into a, a crash, a fatal crash. It just froze up on me and I had this like screen pop-up that said that it was doing a backup, trying to create a recovery point or something, but I, <laughs> it just froze up my whole machine. I had to do a complete restart. And I'm not sure if that's because I just had too many layers going on at once. I'm not entirely sure, but I had to do a complete restart on that. It is possible that maybe it's because I was running Camtasia for the screen capture at the same time, but it is a factor. I never get Photoshop crash on me, like twice a year maybe. And that's usually because I have too much running. Those of you who know that I like to use gradient map effects in Photoshop are gonna be really interested to know that, yeah, you can do gradient maps in Clip Studio. So you have to go up here to this little hamburger icon and then go to new correction layer and then set up a, well, they have color balance, which I use an awful lot as well, but they also have gradient maps. And of course, you know, you might have to create a new gradient, uh, may, maybe create some custom gradients for your own settings that you'd like to use. But what it does is it, obviously those of you who know, uh, I don't need to explain it too much other than to say that it takes whatever is at the lowest end of your value scale, which would be on the left side, it maps that to whatever color is at that lowest point in the gradient map. And then uh, whatever is the highest values, like white is gonna be this. So like if I replace this, you know, with like a yellow, then everything that's really light is gonna look like yellow. So that's a really, really cool feature and one that is, is nice because you can also set that to like an overlay or, sen or something like that. And you can really have it affect the values of your image. So that's really neat. Um, it's not as easy or intuitive as some of what I've experienced with Photoshop, but it certainly, I mean, I'm glad that it's there. It's essential as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's an essential feature. So I'm glad that it's in there. Okay, okay, so final verdict. Uh, there were a couple of things that I noticed. This is after uh, probably about three or four hours. That's about how long this painting took. First of all, I love that it's super highly uh, customizable. Like you can really set your own quick keys for a lot of things. It's got a lot of features. And if you were wondering like about, you know, my tutorials, a lot of my tutorials are in Photoshop. And yeah, almost everything that I do in Photoshop can be done here from what I'm finding. And in fact, I found there were a lot of like brushes that felt something like between Procreate and Photoshop. So if you if you are familiar with the both of those, you'll know that there are some things that you can do in uh, Procreate that you just can't do in Photoshop. It's It has to do with the blending algorithm of how colors are blended. And this feels something like in between, like right in the middle of that, where you can get very blendy, very natural medium kind of stuff going on. There's also really cool things for making comic books, like such as uh, word balloons that are built into the system as a element uh, that you just drop in and then rescale. And that's really useful. But uh, something that I noticed that's a bit of a problem if you're thinking you're gonna dance back and forth, there's some compatibility issues. Some of the layer effects didn't transfer over when I opened the same file up in Photoshop. Like even though it may have had a layer set to a blending mode or something like that, it did not set that same layer to a blending mode. Even though it's saved as a PSD, a Photoshop file, it did not carry over and I lost some of the saturation. I had to go in and make some adjustments. And then the biggest offender was with text. So if you have something that has text in like say a Photoshop file and then you drop that into Clip Studio Paint, it flattens that text. Uh, I don't know if that is a compatibility issue. I don't know what the problem is. Even though it was saved as a PSD, it's the way that it saves the text layers does not carry over. It's not interchangeable. So you would have to do all of your text in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, and here's the thing though. If you're only using Clip Studio Paint, that's not a problem. It's only if you're trying to save a file out that you will open up in Photoshop. Because I'm pretty sure that Clip Studio Paint has some text features because of course they have word balloons. It's like built for people who wanna make comic books. I think it's really a strong buy. It's a strong hell yeah, it really is what it is. If you're thinking like, well, I don't wanna spend a monthly subscription fee on Photoshop. Uh, this is a hell yeah alternative, you know what I mean? 
Um, and especially if it's like, that's the program you're gonna be using for a long time. And then if you get like a professional job at a game studio later or something like that, it won't be that much of a difference for you to learn just a couple of different quick keys and a couple of different functions that Photoshop has that this, this doesn't have, for instance. I mean, there are a ton of features I haven't even really delved into. I know that it's got uh, 3D uh, support and there are a lot of different element effects that you can use. I did feel that overall the screen is kind of cluttered with all these menus and things and you definitely require some customization. Will I use this? I don't, I don't think I'll use it for doing any kind of text, anything that has text in it, uh, but I will definitely be using it probably in several videos coming up here this year because I want to get a full grasp on the benefits of this program. Only sitting down with it for a few hours is it really enough for me to like really give a solid verdict other than to say like, yeah, it's, it's really strong. This is the strongest contender I've seen in terms of like something that's next to the quality of features and the number of features as what Photoshop has. And I think that the reason why they have that storefront that, that allows you to download brushes and stuff. I think that that's there purely for the purpose of compensating them a little bit more. Like they get to sell you new tools and things. And I think that even users can upload their brushes and sell them there. I think it's something that, but it ultimately ends up to where most of the only brushes that are available are free brushes. Or those are the ones that mostly pop up to the top as the most popular, obviously, because most people just want to play that, pay that flat rate and, um, and then just get like free brushes to expand on. And there's so much, there's so much uh, brush sets and, and uh, gradients and swatches and, and models and elements and things like that, that you can, and materials that you can import from that storefront that are free, that like, it's really, you know, I don't know that it's even necessary to download some of them, but who knows, maybe there's something that's very specific to what you need. But yeah, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with it because I mean, why not? It's, it's uh, <laughs> I think for a lot of you out there, it might be really compelling and, and coming from the perspective of somebody who's been using Photoshop for so many years, it's like if this was around 20 years ago, who knows? I mean, it might've dominated as a painting program because that's what it was designed to do. And I'm glad that they've adopted a lot of the quick keys that Photoshop uses. And I love, I love, love, love that you can customize it so much. Like I said, I went through and just started deleting brushes that I know I'll never use so that I can make room for the brushes that I know I will use. So of course the tool doesn't necessarily determine your skill level. You still have to understand things like how to turn forms. You know, you're gonna need to learn your anatomy. No, There's no brush setting to fix your anatomy. It's like you still have to learn the fundamentals of drawing, of course, to be able to do the kind of paintings that even, you know, that you see on my channel. So of course, you know, if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and improve your skills, it is great news to find out that a lot of everything that I teach in Photoshop translates directly over. You might just have to look up, you know, oh, how do I access that part? You know, because it might be hidden within a menu. But if you're just starting your journey or you're just tired of paying Photoshop's outrageous prices, you know, this is definitely an excellent alternative. And yeah, if you're using Clip Studio Paint, you can follow along with all of my workshops and tutorials as well. So that's fantastic news. This is an excellent program. Highly, highly recommend. Of course, dudes, I'm going to be back here with more art next week. If there are features that you want to know whether or not this program has it, let me know in the comments below. Because as I spend more time with it, I am absolutely going to do a much more in-depth tutorial on how to use this software. If there's another painting program that you think I should check out, please drop that in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And dudes, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Ciao.